Newton's method is really great. It really works, as can be seen from doing a few examples. Let's begin by thinking about cube roots. How do you compute the cube root of a number c? According to Newton's method, we need to realize that as the root of a function. The solution to an equation, something of the form f of x equals c minus x cubed. You set that equal to zero, solve for x. The solution is going to be the cube root of c. So then let's set up Newton's method. Recall that says that xn plus 1 equals xn minus f of xn divided by f prime at xn. So in this case, our f is c minus x cubed. What's the derivative of that? Well, that's easy. That's minus 3x squared. And so what we have for our Newton's method is xn plus 1 equals xn minus quantity c minus xn cubed divided by minus 3xn squared. If we do a little bit of simplification, let's say factor out a one-third, we get xn plus 1 equals negative one-third times quantity 2xn minus c times xn to the negative 2. Now that's our setup, but what do we observe? We observe that there's only basic multiplication, addition, division. That's it. You do that over and over. There's no roots involved. There's no having to compute square roots or cube roots or anything like that. This can be done with basic operations. That's kind of cool. But let's see how this actually works. In a specific example where we're trying to compute the cube root of 100. So c equals 100. If we pick one or maybe several initial conditions that we think might be close to cube root of 100 and then start iterating them forward under Newton's method, then it only takes a few iterations to obtain an answer that looks like about 4.6415888336, etc., etc. And in this example, it seems to not really matter so much what we chose for our initial condition. As long as it was a reasonable good start, we get to this root really quickly. Okay, so that's how to use Newton's method to compute cube roots with just addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. But what about division? That can be kind of difficult. Let's switch and use Newton's method to compute the reciprocal of a non-zero constant c. That's not always easy. Think about something like 1 over pi. How do you compute that? You could do long division, but here's a way using Newton's method. I can realize the reciprocal of c as the solution to the equation f of x equals c minus 1 over x equals 0. If I solve that for x, I get 1 over c, of course. So our function f is c minus x to the negative 1. Its derivative is, let's see, c is a constant. I have minus minus x to the negative 2. OK. Newton's method says xn plus 1 equals xn minus quantity c minus 1 over xn divided by xn to the negative 2. That's multiplied by xn squared. Multiplying through, factoring out an xn, I get xn plus 1 equals xn times quantity 2 minus c times xn. And this is super cool. There's no division involved here. There's only addition, subtraction, and multiplication. No division. So for example, if we want to compute the reciprocal of e, if we want to compute 1 over e, we can take a few starting guesses and then plug them into our calculator using this Newton update. And we see that after just a few iterations, we are converging to a number, 2.367879 dot dot dot. That's it. That is the reciprocal of e. Now this presents us with an opportunity for comparison. Because the reciprocal of e is really e to the negative 1. 
and I can think of a different way to compute that. Let's set up a contest. Let's play who wins. How many steps does it take to get 11 digits of accuracy for 1 over e between using the Taylor series, that's e to the negative 1, we could use the exponential series for that, versus the Newton's method that we have just set up. So to get those first 11 digits, to get e to the negative 1 as 0.36787944122 dot 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 dot, we need in the Taylor series for e to the x setting x equals negative 1. It takes the first 14 terms of that series added together to get this many digits of accuracy. In contrast with Newton's method, well, we have to have an initial guess. But with an initial guess of one half, it only takes five steps of Newton's method to get the same number of digits of accuracy. That's pretty good. But it does seem to depend on the initial condition. And this takes us to the warnings. You have to be careful with Newton's method. In all the examples we've done, we always converge, and we always get there cleanly and quickly, but you do not always converge. And if you do converge, you do not always converge to the solution you are looking for. If your equation has multiple roots, you can have problems. Now, what is this? What do I mean by problems? Let's take a look. Let's consider a case where our function f has more than one root. Depending on where we begin with our initial guess, our initial condition, if we follow that Newton's method, we wind up converging to the root that we wanted if we start off sufficiently closely. But if we move away... Weird things can happen. Things where, whoa, what just happened there? And look, all of a sudden now, I'm converging to the other root. What's happening here is that in between the two roots, there's a place where the derivative of this function vanishes. And, oh, wait a minute. Now that I think about it, we're dividing by the derivative. Division by zero, kind of a bad thing. And that really shows up in Newton's method, and it really complicates convergence, especially if you start off with an initial condition and you bounce around, and then after a few steps, you hit a place where the derivative vanishes. Ooh, that's kind of bad. That's the one thing that you have to watch out for with Newton's method is where the derivative of f vanishes. Now that's it for Newton's method. This is really cool. Great example of iterated linearization but we're not done with this type of recursive system because in the future, we will see these again. Near the end of our journey, we will see recursions when we build a new calculus, a discrete calculus for sequences. But that's not going to come till volume four, so don't worry about it.